A new study published in the European Heart Journal found that a cheap anti-inflammatory drug cuts heart disease by 12%, and this highlights something that many of my patients don't realize. Inflammation is a critical driver of heart disease. It's like a smoldering fire in our blood vessel walls, weakening them and accelerating plaque formation. But there are many simple things that we can do to bring that fire under control, even without medication. So I'm going to walk you through the top ways to combat inflammation naturally. But first, let's look at this new study, because it identifies a treatment that can be a smart option for those at elevated risk, and it contains an important lesson for all of us. The study focuses on a specific population, those diagnosed with heart disease caused by the buildup of plaque in their arteries. This buildup is called atherosclerosis, and when someone has atherosclerosis, they're at significant increased risk for things like heart attacks and strokes, and globally, these are the first and fifth leading causes of death. So it's an urgent priority to identify ways to reduce risks for those diagnosed with blockages in their blood vessels, and one option that's recently caught the attention of researchers is a cheap anti-inflammatory medication called colchicine. So this medication has an interesting history. It's found naturally in a certain plant that was used by the ancient Egyptians as a remedy for joint pain. And today in clinical medicine, I primarily prescribe colchicine to treat gout, which causes painful joint swelling. But researchers noticed something unexpected. People taking colchicine for their gout were also getting other health benefits, and some of those benefits related to heart health. So for instance, a study published in 2012, the researchers combed through patient records within a healthcare system in New York. They were looking at those who had filled a prescription for colchicine to treat gout, and they wanted to see if those patients had a different rate of heart attacks compared to other patients. And it turned out they did. Over about a year and a half, gout patients taking colchicine had less than half as many heart attacks as those who didn't take the medication. This was an intriguing result and it gave researchers a question to explore. Could colchicine be used as a treatment to drive down the risks of heart attacks and strokes? And to answer this question, scientists began to test colchicine in randomized controlled trials, and things were looking promising. A meta-analysis in 2024 pulled together the findings of six trials involving about 15,000 people. The participants were drawn from those who had previously had a stroke or had been diagnosed with heart disease. The results were dramatic. Those who took colchicine lowered their stroke risk by 27%, and the risk for major heart problems dropped by about the same amount. But since that analysis was published, the results are in from two fresh trials, and these are the biggest ones done to date, but their findings cast doubt on the earlier results. One found no benefit with colchicine after three years in 7,000 patients who had had a heart attack. The other was testing for the impact of colchicine in over 8,000 patients who had had a stroke already. After a three-month follow-up, the treatment made no difference in how often patients had additional strokes. So the authors of the brand new study wanted to dive back into all of the evidence that we have today to figure out what is going on. Their analysis included a total of nine trials involving almost 31,000 people who had had heart disease or a stroke. Overall results weren't as impressive as the earlier meta-analysis that we looked at, but they were still strongly in favor of the effectiveness of colchicine. So those taking the medication saw a 12% reduced risk of heart attacks, strokes, or death from heart disease. And that's why the current clinical guidelines recommend adding colchicine to the treatment mix for those with heart disease. And that's great news for those who have already got heart disease, but as I said earlier though, the impacts of this research are hugely significant for all of us. High levels of inflammation in our blood vessels is like pouring gasoline on a fire, it accelerates the process of plaque building up in our arteries. The walls of our arteries start out smooth when we're young, and this allows our blood to flow easily. But over time, the inner lining of our arteries can get damaged, and this can be caused by things like high blood pressure, smoking, and other factors. And when this damage occurs, a healing process kicks in, but things don't always return to normal. Fats and other substances in the blood can stick to the damaged spots. Over time, material can build up into thick deposits of plaque. This causes significant problems. As plaque grows, they narrow our arteries, restricting blood flow. It's just like how water pipes can get narrower in time from mineral deposits. The greatest danger is when this plaque ruptures and breaks. This can cause a blood clot, which can entirely block an artery. If this occurs in an artery feeding the heart, it causes a heart attack. If it happens in the brain, it causes a stroke. Now, one of the most important drivers of this process is LDL particles. These particles carry cholesterol and they can move in and out of our blood vessel walls. But if the concentration is too high, the LDL gets trapped in our blood vessel walls, leading to plaque development and blockages. And from the PISA study, even when a person's blood pressure, weight and insulin sensitivity and inflammation are perfect, plaque still develops if LDL cholesterol is above 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, and it becomes more severe the higher that level goes. The pattern is clear, the more LDL cholesterol equals more plaque in our arteries. 
And I wanted to bring up this reminder because a recent study has been making the rounds on social media. In this trial, researchers looked at people who are so-called termed lean mass hyperresponders. They're otherwise very healthy, but they've got sky-high LDL cholesterol levels. The participants had extremely rapid plaque progression, even though the authors tried to bury the results by hiding the primary outcome in a difficult-to-interpret graph. So LDL cholesterol is crucial for plaque development. But what about inflammation? Well, like I mentioned earlier, it's like pouring gasoline and it accelerates plaque development. Chronically high levels of inflammation can make LDL cholesterol and other components more likely to get stuck into the artery wall. This in turn drives more inflammation, so there's a vicious feedback loop that accelerates plaque formation. And the evidence suggests that getting inflammation under control is a powerful strategy to reduce our risks of heart attacks and strokes. And while colchicine might be a good option for some people, there are several proven ways to drive down inflammation without medication. The first is to lose weight if it's above where it should be. So the reason is that excess fat stimulates the production of chemicals that promote inflammation. And when we're trying to bring down weight, diet is usually a primary consideration. But getting our diet right is more than just reducing calorie intake, because what we eat also relates to inflammation in critical ways. So on one hand, some foods are associated with increased inflammation. So diets, for example, that are high in refined starches, sugar and saturated fats are pro-inflammatory. One analysis of a study of nurses looked at how markers of inflammation and blood vessel health are linked to their diets. Those who ate a typical Western diet showed increased signs of inflammation. Then there are other foods that are associated with lower inflammation. So for example, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, unsaturated fats like extra virgin olive oil, and healthy proteins from sources like legumes and fish. We want to make sure that we're exercising regularly, that we're prioritizing our sleep, that we're maintaining our social connections. And finally, I want to mention two additional drivers of inflammation that we definitely want to avoid, smoking and excessive alcohol intake. Now in this video, we've touched on two big risk factors for heart disease, LDL cholesterol and inflammation. But there's another one with similar levels of importance, and that's blood pressure. The research has identified one specific and surprisingly simple exercise that's helpful in bringing down our blood pressure. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out what it is and how you can do it at home.